Okay, welcome back to another CSS Flexbox video. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to align uh, the different child items inside of a Flexbox container. Let me show you the setup here. So I have a flex wrapper, that is the red part here. And then I have three boxes. Uh, all of them take the general uh, box class, and then they each have a specific box one, two, three, and I'll show you why that is necessary. Uh, our flex wrapper is the parent and it's at display flex and we do space between so that when it goes down you can see that it's responsive and uh, flex wrap is on so when we get to the edge so each of these boxes is 200 pixels and when they all reach that then they wrap automatically so you see how they go down to the next row automatically. Um, this red box is uh, 600 by 800, and it's an automatic margin so that it keeps it centered in the middle of the page. Just makes it easier to see everything, I think. And then for the children, uh, we have this general box class with a background of pink, and then the boxes are 200 by 200 pixels. So let's go ahead and look at um, how can you align these items. Now, this is a great resource here. It's from Chris Coyer at CSSTricks.com. And so if you type in CSS Tricks and Flexbox, it'll probably bring this up as the first result. Now, this is a, uh, it calls it a complete guide to Flexbox. And it has a lot of information. And I find myself kind of going back there. There are also some, uh, some examples as you go down the page at the bottom, which can help you to understand a little bit more about Flexbox. So we are looking at uh, this property here, aligning items, and then also we're going to look at align self. <clears throat> so we can take all these items and we can align them uh, anywhere inside of this flex box um, that we're allowed. So we have to go to the parent, and then we have to tell all the children to align now this one is align items so when you use that that means that it's going to align all the items inside of the um, all the children of this parent flex box and so we're going to say align items and we're just going to do an easy one flex end which is going to put everything uh, to the bottom so it moves all the children to the baseline to the bottom of the box now if our box was only 300, you would see that they would still be at the bottom of the box. And now if we do, the default is flex start, so that's where they were before, and that puts everything along the top edge of the, uh, the children. Uh, we can also do centering, so easy centering um, of this flex box, and it puts it exactly into the center of the page. And then also you could do stretch, which I don't think, because our boxes are um, a set width, it's stretching all the way down to the end, but you're not allow, allowed to see it really. So if we do auto, so if we do auto, and then we do stretch, then it's going to fill the entire space. Right? It's going to fill the entire space. And so now we have no content inside of our boxes. So when we put them back to the start, then you can see So now there's some space in there and then it's just aligned to the top. Okay. But if this were a uh, stretch, which again, then you can see that it would stretch the box all the way from the top to the bottom and then if we also change this size then it just fills the space vertically see how that works okay so any more oh and then there's a baseline so let's fill this a little, a little bit of content here <clears throat> 
<clears throat> then we'll just do uh, align items to the baseline. That's not going to do very much because we don't have unequal columns here. Let's see. Same thing here. So it's not gonna, you're not gonna see a lot of change here. The baseline one is um, a little bit strange. So you can see that this text has all different, um, all different sizes. So it's actually allowing it across the baseline of different size texts. So. Um, so it's interesting. Uh, I've not have to come across the baseline yet. I haven't used that one, but I use center quite a bit. Uh, flex start and flex end. Those are going to be your main, your main ones. I could see where stretch would come in as well. All right. So that is aligning the child items all together so that you're aligning everything all at the same time. So let's just do um, let's do different items. If you're going to use this property of align self, that's for each child item. You can choose where they're going to be inside of this parent container. So the parent says basically box one, you're going to do something. Box two, you're going to do something different. And box three, you're going to do something different than the first two. And the way that we do that is we need to make sure that we uh, can target uh, these boxes specifically so we give them a specific name and that's why I've called them box one two and three <clears throat> and then we go and we just start assigning them instead of align items which is all of the items together we're gonna say align self so this box is going to align itself in a specific position and we'll just say flex and and what this allows is for each individual child element to be positioned inside of the flex box, the parent flex box container. And then box two is going to be centered. Um, so align. There we go. Okay. Indentation problems. So it is aligned to the center. And then for this last one, maybe we can do. Stretch. So for the last item, it stretches all the way from the top to the bottom of the parent element. So you can see there's a lot of powerful uh, things that you can do. Uh, inside of Flexbox, uh, especially in or in uh, relation to one another and in relation to the parent uh, element. So all you do is make something a Flexbox using Display Flex, and then you can decide how you want to treat all of that um, content inside, or you can decide that some elements should be uh, at the top of the parent element or at the bo at the bottom of the parent element or centered inside of the parent element. So if we did all of these <clears throat> just as a way to check it out and let you know. So we have three different text size or text boxes, right? So we have kind of a large, a medium, and a small. And when you do align items or align self to the center, uh, we could have done it here as well. So you didn't need to do them individually. You could do them at the parent level. And when you align them to the center, now you have perfect centering, even though each of the boxes is, uh, even though each of the boxes is going to be uh, a different size. So let's say we add a lot of content to the middle one. You can see that everything still stays vertically centered even though we're adding content on the tops and the bottoms and 
as I understand it, this is one of the reasons that Flexbox was made, was because you can't always determine what's going to be inside of this element. So when you create a layout or when you create a, a, a design, let's say you're using something like a CMS where people are going to have control of what they can put into the page and what they can't. These flexible items allow for things like centering um, to happen without breaking the layout because it provides flexibility but it also allows those elements uh, to be centered vertically or horizontally or to give you space above or below. So it's a, <clears throat> it's a really important advance in uh, CSS and especially in uh, responsive web design. And you can see that this is a totally responsive you know, side here. It goes from wide to tall and that is aligning child items inside of a parent container. Now, if you have any questions, please just leave um, a comment or a question uh, below the video and I will try to get to it as quickly as I can. Uh, I'm going to cover one more aspect of CSS Flexbox and so look for that in the playlist and also if you haven't seen the other items in the playlist um, just find the uh, CSS Flexbox playlist and it shows you how to do things like ordering and centering and alignment vertically and horizontally so uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video